Welcome back. You're still tuned into Halftime Report on CNBC TV 18. Well, let's discuss the big event for today. Reliance Industries will be holding its 47th annual general meeting 2 p.m. onwards this afternoon. Investors await concrete plans for the Geo and retail IPOs. Updates on the new energy projects and Geo's 5G monetization will be keenly watched out for. To discuss this and uh, the state of the markets as well, we have Ashi Anand, CEO and founder at I I IME Capital, who's joining in now. Ashi, hi, welcome to the show. Well, if you could just start by giving us a sense in terms of what your key expectation is from the Reliance AGM and what would probably be the most market or stock moving according to you. Sure, perfect. Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, so I think in terms of market expectations around the Reliance AGM, and uh, the Reliance AGM is probably one of the most watched AGMs uh, in the Indian corporate landscape, given the kind of tendency for certain big bang announcements. So if we're really looking at this year's AGM, uh, I think what we're really focusing on is there have been certain important announcements made in previous AGMs. So in 2019, for example, they spoke about a uh, potential listing both of geo and the retail business uh, over a five-year period. So you're kind of coming towards the end of that. You have seen certain progress or certain indicators of possibly getting prepared for listing. So if you're looking at the retail business, they have you have seen accelerated payback of loans. You have seen ESOPs for senior employees. So I think a very, very important and possibly the biggest market moving uh, element here is going to be any kind of update about potential listing of both the retail and the geo business. Now, apart from this very important corporate event, uh, I think markets are also going to be focused on what's happening on the new energy business. Uh, it's something which could potentially add a lot of value, but is obviously in very nascent stages. Uh, 2011 is when they really announced this, and they had spoken about a $10 billion investment over three years with longer term plans of setting up 100 gigawatts across uh, fuel cells, hydrogen, battery and other renewable uh, segments. Uh, now, any progress in terms of what is happening around these new energy initiatives, because that really helps in terms of the longer term transition away from the petrochem business towards newer energy. Uh, so this is again, something which is gonna be closely watched for, uh, just in terms of updates on plans, but probably corporate actions around the listing is something which is probably the focus of the market. Uh, I think apart from these two key elements, you're also going to be looking at any indications of a possible merger of Disney into the into Reliance's media business, as well as other updates that may happen on Geo Financials. Mm. All right. Hi, Ashi. Uh, good day and good to see you, Ben. So we have got that in terms of expectations. We've neatly summed that up. So that's about Reliance. And in the next two hours, we'll know, uh, you know from the management itself. Let's focus on market then. How are you feeling right now? You know, the, the way we have rallied, the feeling particularly about the broader markets is a little bit uh, uncomfortable. You know, but the select stocks have moved up. How do you view this? If you're allocating fresh money right now, how much of it would be to the large cap space as well as the mid cap space? Because you got instances from the SME market, select FNO stocks, which are not very comfortable. So actually, we are fairly comfortable, right? And I think a lot of that is based on where we are positioned in terms of our portfolios. So if you're looking at the broader market construct, uh, I think we are very, very positive for growth over the coming decade. India is really just shining uh, from an overall uh, global perspective. Our economy's growth potential over the coming decade is just uh, heads and shoulders over everyone else. Uh, now, if you're looking at the whole, and this is something which leads us to be very positive from longer term growth perspective, uh, you are going into next month likely to see a start of an interest rate reduction cycle, especially in terms of the US Fed. So this is actually an important kind of a tailwind for the market that we do see actually emerging. Uh, I think when you're looking at valuations, you have to look at it in the context of the underlying growth story and the underlying quality. And both of that for India has really improved substantially over the last three or four years with multiple new drivers of growth coming in. Now, when I said we are fairly comfortable in terms of our positioning and we're very comfortable from an overall market perspective is because our portfolios are a lot more tilted towards large and mid caps. There are certain pockets of the market. Uh, this would namely be small caps, possibly for specific sectors. And I think the MSME exchange for sure 
There are pockets where there is clear irrational exuberance, there are clear excesses. But the moment you get out of those uh, segments, right, and you look at the broader markets, look at certain large caps, there are still, even at current levels, enough areas where we are seeing, seeing value uh, with growth and kind of overall quality. So I, I think we are fairly uh, comfortably poised. Okay. Just wanted to come back uh, to the RIL EGM and just had a uh, question with regards to the IPOs. Uh, what, according to you, is the timeline uh, when it comes to the GO as well as the retail IPO? And uh, what would you like to hear in that context? Would it just be a timeline? Are you expecting to probably have a decisive kind of uh, date? Uh, so uh, we'll know the answer right in a couple of hours. Uh, so um, I, I, I think even if you get some sense of an update in a timeline, right? Because this is something which clearly people have been expecting. Uh, should we are very close to the kind of timelines given a few years back? Uh, even if they do give some kind of an indication around, um, is it happening this year or the next year, right? That itself will be something I think which will give markets a reasonable amount of clarity. I'm fairly sure they won't come out with a specific date. In our assessment, it seems like Reliance Retail is a little more uh, further along the road, just based on certain kind of actions taken at the company level that seem to be in preparation for an IPO. Uh, so even if you just get broad indications that Reliance Retail will happen this year, Geo will happen either this year or next year, it will be something to give markets uh, clear visibility in terms of what's happening. Uh, specific dates, uh, I, I would doubt, uh, would be announced. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's talk about then themes that you like. Uh, I think your position more towards defensives, I believe. Uh, could you tell us what all is on your radar and what do you like at current reckoning? No, so uh, not really. I think we are quite uh, balanced. So if you go back about four or five months back, we were quite heavily tilted towards cross capital formation. So various parts of the market that were doing reasonably well. So we had large exposures in real estate, in capital goods, um, and that part, right, and uh, including defense. And those exposures really helped us last year in terms of outperforming overall markets on a large and mid-cap strategy. What we have done going into the current year is we a lot of the weightages that we had in some of these segments had actually moved up quite substantially. So we have trimmed some of, we've basically done partial profit booking got down these exposures to what they were at the start when we may have initiated positions. And some of this has kind of gotten reallocated towards um, consumption, a certain amount of banking, et cetera. So I think we are quite well balanced from a portfolio perspective in terms of segments where there is momentum. So this would be a real estate, capital goods, capital marketplace, et cetera, as well as kind of segments which haven't really performed and where we are seeing some kind of revival. So consumption is something where we've increased weights recently. Uh, BFSI, especially banking, is a space where I think the combination of growth, quality, and value is really quite comfortable. Uh, so I, I don't think we've gone defensive per se. It's just kind of, I, I think we're well balanced in terms of both of these segments of the market. But it is very okay. clearly positioned towards large and mid caps. We are staying away from heavy small cap exposures. Okay, all right. Just staying away from uh, small cap exposures. But um, Ashi, IT seems to have come back. There's a lot of optimism now that uh, they, the Fed could be on a rate cutting cycle. Uh, so how would you approach IT from these current levels and how much does it probably comprise of in terms of your portfolio right now? Uh, so IT, we are still underweight, but we are marginally kind of underweight. Um, I think what you are seeing in IT is that for a couple of years, this has clearly not moved, right? And there is clear potential for a catch up rally. Uh, there is a certain amount of excitement happening around the fact that once the US Fed starts reducing rates, uh, that could signal an improvement in economic outlook and therefore increase IT spends. Uh, at least as of right now, these are kind of expectations. Uh, there isn't enough on the ground visibility of this happening. So we've just kind of gone past uh, the, 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 the recent result season. And if you saw the recent results, while there is has been an improvement in the BFSI outlook, overall kind of discretion, uh, overall uh, guidances in terms of organic growth are still in the kind of low single digits. Now, that is something which, according to us, is enough for some kind of a smaller trading pop. 
But in order for IIT to have a more sustained run, you need this kind of combination of reduced interest rates and an improvement in economic outlook, leading to organic growth outlooks moving a little higher. You need at least a 3-4% delta happening there. And I think until that happens, we'd probably be neutral to slightly underweight in IT and not have a very large position. Uh, that said, I think it has underperformed for quite a long time. Uh, various parts of the market, uh, as in you are in this kind of phase where you are seeing some rebalancing of, of the overall market momentum towards segments which haven't performed and IT could actually clearly uh, do well there. Okay, all right, Ashi, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks very much for joining in and talking to us and giving us your perspectives.